Oh yeah, that's nylon for you. It's just deforming, it's not even breaking. All right guys, today we're talking about Carbon X HTN plus carbon fiber from 3D X-Tech. That's HTN plus CF. If you're looking for something that prints easily in an enclosed chamber, just like nylon, but withstands temperatures higher than Ultim 9085, look no further. The new HTNCF is a performance high temp PPA nylon blended with carbon fiber to make anything from jigs and fixtures to under the hood car parts and even vacuum molds. Carbon X CF HTN is an advanced semi aromatic polyphthalamide. PPA reinforced with high modulus carbon fiber, widely used for metal replacement applications that must resist high mechanical loads at elevated temperatures and in aggressive chemical environments, HTN has traditionally been the go-to material for demanding applications in automotive, aerospace, oil and gas, electrical, electronics, and industrial markets. So here's the box. This is what you get when you buy it from visionminer.com slash materials. We've got a bunch of different nylons and carbon fibers, and the spool itself comes in a thick vacuum sealed bag. Now, if this isn't sealed when you get it, no worries. You have to dry this stuff no matter what, even when it's brand new, so no worries there. But it comes in 500 gram and one kilogram spools. By the way, why do you want to buy from us? Simple, you get 3% back on every dollar you spend. That can be used towards nozzles, spools, glue, machines, accessories, more filament, anything you want. Plus, we're always on the phone to help you when you need it, when you bought it from our store. So definitely check that out. We've got everything from machines to nozzles to filament and everything you need for high temp 3D printing. Where are you going to see this stuff in the actual industry? Uh, you're going to see a lot of car parts, uh, <laughs> car parts and more car parts. Whether you're making intake manifolds or electronics brackets, this stuff is strong and resistant to many chemicals that you see in automotive applications like hydrocarbons and gas and things of that nature. So what kind of machine do you need to print this filament? Firstly, you need a nozzle to go to at least 285 Celsius up to about 315 or 320 depending on the actual printer. As far as bed temperature goes, you need at least 110 Celsius to around 120 Celsius. You could probably get away with lower, but that's where we do it and that's where we get the best results, especially using our nanopolymer adhesive on the plate. It works awesome for all nylons and it really, you know, brims, no rafts, no nothing like that on PEI, glass, carbon fiber, whatever type of print bed you have, it works amazing. Now, as far as a heated chamber goes, you do want to have a heated chamber anywhere from 80 to 120 Celsius, but it's not absolutely required. Uh, we definitely recommend printing it in something with a heated chamber because you're just at those elevated temperatures and it'll help it print easier. Now, as far as drying goes, you definitely have to dry this even fresh new out of the box like all nylons. They love to absorb moisture, which causes more warping and you know, poor surface finish and, and just, you know, weaker parts. Uh, you got to get all that moisture out of there before you melt it. And we do have a full drying kit, including the vacuum chamber and ovens on visionminer.com slash dry kit. It's the best way we found to get all that moisture out so your prints don't get ugly and weak. We're here to make it easy and that's why we also made metal spools so you can dry at higher temps and faster. With nylon, a vacuum chamber really, really helps. Definitely check out the drying kit. Now, as far as the spool goes, these carbon fiber materials, when you get down to the last little bit, they can be really hard to secure to the outer rim of the spool they come on. So this stuff, you know, that's partly because they're brittle, uh, but in general, this thing is super functional. It makes it really easy to re-spool or just secure the end of the filament after you're done with it and storing it or baking it. Really, really, it helps. So let's talk about some basic material specs. Uh, for a heat deflection temperature, continuous use, you're getting 220 Celsius. Glass transition temperature is around 125 Celsius and the melt temp is around 265 Celsius. Now all the data sheets are available in our online store at visionminer.com slash data. So if you want to find the tensile modulus, the elongation at break, impact strength, all that juicy stuff, you can find those on the website. By the way, if this video is helping you, uh, please hit that like button. It helps the algorithm tell people that our content is good and uh, that you want more of it, and we love you for it. Uh, you might as well subscribe while you're at it too, because we've got a ton of these videos on all the different materials on the way or already released. So let's talk about some specific environmental factors. 
Uh, now this particular nylon has very low moisture absorption, which gives you improved retention of mechanical properties when exposed to humid environments and water, uh, and it's also got you know, outstanding standing chemical resistance to alcohols, acids, fuels, whether it be automotive or jet fuels, oils and lubricants, brake fluid, transmission fluid, antifreeze, uh, and chloride. So in the automotive industry, this is a really, really good choice, and it's got that extra temperature. So if you're going under the hood, you don't have to worry about it. Intake manifolds, there's a lot of stuff you can do. So let's take a quick look at some of these example parts. We've got some other videos going over tons of nylon. We've got comparison between all the nylons. So definitely check out those videos. But for now, we're just gonna check these out. Uh, we've got some electronics enclosures. And these printed beautifully. We've got these in every material, so you can really see the difference. Uh, there's always a little bit of tuning you can do, but the surface finish is fantastic. You can barely see the layer lines. That's one thing about carbon fiber, is it really hides the layer lines, gives you a beautiful part. Uh, you notice on the underside here, we used nylon as the support material as opposed to using a dual extruder and you get a little bit of texture but it still fuses really good and it looks pretty decent depending where you're gonna you know have the part actually used and exposed now one thing we've noticed is that compared to mark forge they have the most beautiful carbon fiber nylon parts um, you can get the exact same quality with almost every nylon specifically 12 PA6 and uh, this HTN stuff really, really works good. The glass feels a little more rough, but we'll get into that in just a second. So beautiful parts. This is a manufacturing jig from one of our customers. We printed again in every material just to show you the exact differences. Uh, beautiful surface finish. Dimensional accuracy is good. Details are pretty nice. Uh, with all these materials and open material systems, it really just comes down to your tuning and slicing on your particular machine. That's why we don't give out exact specs. It's always a range. It's going to be different based on your hot end geometry, etc. Um, we've got these vases, which uh, came out beautifully nice. Uh, very smooth, very good. Uh, just carbon fiber, man. It looks great. Pretty, pretty, ooh, yeah, you got some flex right there. Uh, by the way, if you want to compare the different materials or grades of nylon and carbon fiber and stuff, we have these little sample bars that we've printed out. And if you want to test it in your, you know, in your chemical solution or a certain temperature or something like that, we can send you a variety of these and you can actually, you know, feel and test them out in real life. Now, before we move on to the burning and breaking part of the video, I just want to show you the difference between HTN, we've got PA12, and then we have the CFPA6, as well as the glass fill 30% carbon. Now, you notice as we go along, the glass fill is the roughest. It's got the highest fill uh, and it's, it's definitely the roughest surface texture. And then we've got the CFPA6 followed by the 12 and the HTN. So you get a little bit of different surface quality and a slightly different color out of each material. Just food for thought. We've got videos on all of these, so definitely go check those videos out if you want to know more. So moving right along into the breaking and burning portion of the video. Safety first, I'm gonna get some glasses on and I'm gonna get the Babco vise out. So I'm gonna break some stuff in this, uh, and I'm just gonna break one of these sample bars. We're gonna see how it breaks. We're gonna see if it breaks along the layers, if it breaks isotropically, if it explodes, or if it sort of bends. You know, they all behave a little bit differently. Sort of a random practical test just to show you what these things are like on video. Get that in there. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Ooh, okay, we had a clean break. Definitely uh, was very rigid. Not the easiest thing to break. Let's check out how that, how that actually broke. Interesting. So we didn't have any apparent layer weakness. It definitely broke very, you know, roughly. There's no exact lines. It didn't break across the layers and everything like that. You can really see it's a tough material. It didn't explode either, which is a testament to the nylon. The carbon fiber always you know, reduces the elongation and, and the overall impact strength, makes it more brittle, but it still maintains that nylon uh, toughness, right? 
Very cool. Okay, the next brake test we're going to do is I'm just going to shove my thumbs through this vase. We're going to see how the material reacts. This was printed with a 0.4 nozzle at uh, 0.6 millimeter extrusion width at 0.2 layer height. So let's just see what happens. There we go. Oh yeah, that's nylon for you. It's just deforming. It's not even breaking. Like, oh, the layer lines are strong. It's got great adhesion. And you can literally just crumple the whole thing up. Did I get any breaks? Oh, I got a little break right there. A little break right there. It is going across multiple layers. Let's see what happens. Let me just crush this whole thing up right now. Ah, it's so beautiful. I don't want to do this, but I have to for science and for you guys, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, all right. Tough stuff. I love it. All right. Now let's look at how that broke. So on the bottom layer here, we did have a break straight up the layer lines, but it looks like we have around the perimeter, we've got two to three layers. It's sort of switched off between, so it's pretty good. You always do lose a little bit in the, uh, in the Z axis. It's just the nature of the game with FDM. With most materials, we actually have some materials that uh, are stronger in the Z axis. I know. Stay tuned. Subscribe for more on that video coming very soon. Um, yeah. All right, pretty good. Up here, we had some breakage. Now, if this was stuck in the dehydrator for a while, this absorbs a lot less moisture than the PA6, but um, if you dehydrate it, it becomes a little more stiff and a little more brittle in those dry environments. All right, very cool, very cool. So, uh, let's move on to the next part of the test, which is burning. Let's light this thing on, this puppy on fire. All right, so before we do that, obviously we don't want to smoke up the entire studio, so we've got our trusty Print Pro 2 here. Uh, this one does come with the movable arm and hood, so you can use this for soldering, you can use it for anything with fumes, you can even use it for grinding to get some of that particulate up. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to light some stuff on fire. So I'm going to turn this puppy on so all the smoke goes in there. All right, first test. I'm just going to put direct flame onto this for about 10 seconds and we're going to see what happens. It is nylon, so it's going to burn. It's not flame retardant, but it is HTM. So let's see exactly what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's on fire! Oh! <laughs> Good thing I'm wearing safety glasses. That could have destroyed me there. Um, so it does drip, it definitely lights on fire and does not self-extinguish, but it did not light on fire as easily as the PA6 that we tested earlier. So let's do that again over here on the other side, just to see what's going on. We'll light it on fire again. right there boom and that's gonna drip and it's gonna cause all sorts of uh, not good stuff let's get that smoke out of there oh yeah that's gonna be permanently affixed to the table very nice <laughs> and then once it's here ooh, that smells that smells that's why we got this puppy here otherwise we'd have to evacuate for the next hour and then come back man if you're printing an enclosed chamber too they got the print through a pro 3 which actually fully circulates the entire innards of whatever closed chamber printer you're doing, check those out, visionminer.com slash BOFA. Uh, but while we're here, it has gone back to rigid. That is another thing with this material. If you take a heat gun, or if I just, if I just score the surface with the lighter, you can actually bring out some of that sheen and make it more shiny than before. So with a heat gun, this works really good. You can just go over it. Um, and you can actually bring a shine out in your nylon parts. All right, not bad, not bad. All right, other than that, we got a ton of these videos for cross comparisons. We got the same parts in each material, so you can really see how they sort of compare to each other. We got more videos on carbon fiber nylons that we sell, all kinds of stuff going on. If you got a question or a comment or anything, leave a comment below or shoot us an email at contactdivisionminer.com or even give us a call. We're here to help you get the right thing for whatever it is you're trying to do, even if we don't sell it. That's what we do here. And uh, that's all for this video. So thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.